friends. It certainly has been a troubling time. I was in France at the time of the attacks in Paris. I was in Nice, but I could feel the reverberations through my French audience with family and people they cared about. And now back in the United States, there was a recent attack on a facility for disabled people. And we have this new word, radicalization. We're talking about the radicalization of individuals that lead them to these atrocious acts of violence. And it seems to me that there is something we can learn from the body and the immune system that that may help us in a way understand not only the process, but, but also the, the, the remedy. So I want to talk today a little bit about how the, the body can teach us something about the radicalization process and also how to repair it. Well, in the body, when we are exposed to chemicals, toxic things, uh, when we're eating processed foods a lot, um, when viruses, bacteria get inside of us, they can cause the formation of what are so-called free radicals. And what a free radical is, is the, it, it's a molecule that's highly reactive. And what it wants to do is it wants to go and grab another molecule and steal, well, steal an electron, steal a charged particle from that other, that other molecule which then turns that other molecule into a free radical. And then we get this cascading effect of free radicals in the body. And, and the result of that is a process of re in inflammation and a process of um, we, we don't feel well. It can, it can be a prelude to cancer. It can cause inflammation in blood vessels and increase the heart disease. And what we know is that Nature provides us with a natural protection against these free radicals in the form of what are called antioxidants. And the antioxidants are, I'm going to call them general, generous, generous molecules. The examples of them are like vitamin C and vitamin D and vitamin E, but there are thousands and thousands of antioxidant molecules that we find primarily in plant and, and uh, fruits, plant, plant foods, vegetables and fruits, and what they do is that they travel through the body, and when they come to a free radical, they don't punish it. They donate what the free radical needs, um, and, and the free radical becomes neutralized, and an antioxidant doesn't in turn become, because of its donation, another free radical. So it breaks this kind of cascading effect of inflammation and reactivity in the body. So the word radical, by its very nature, means to be at the root of something, to, um, it means having roots, it means going to the center, it means the foundation, the source of, of something. And when we start talking about radicalization of individuals, uh, we're talking about a way in which in the collective body, certain human beings need to borrow identity from there's something inside of them that doesn't feel connected to themselves. They've been abused or they've felt marginalized, they felt disenfranchised. They're often actually fairly well educated, but they don't, they don't feel anchored. They don't feel anchored in a, in a deep sense of self. And as a result, they're borrowing their identity from, from the extreme forms of philosophy and ideology of religions or political uh, movements. And they become, in the, in the body collective, they become free radicals. And what they need to do is attack and take, take life, take joy, take happiness, act out a kind of compensatory revenge, a, a creating of identity, by stealing from others the joy of life. And it's a really painful thing to see because these people are often fairly well educated, um, we don't understand easily why they want to do it, but, but but we do have an example from the antioxidants in our body that if if they could meet an antioxidant, if they could meet a human being who could overflow, whose, whose internal connection to self is deep enough, um, the the process of of this relationship of of this transmission 
of sanity, this transmission of connection, this transmission of belonging, this, tr this transmission of welcoming that happens from a human being that we could call an antioxidant human being, an overflowing human being. Now, I know once a person is radicalized, then the immune system has to come into place. In our bodies, once there are free radicals, either the antioxidants gobble them up, or if they form disease or inflammation, then the immune system will come and, and it even uses its own capacity to create free radicals to neutralize disease. What happens if we're constantly excited with so many free radicals and we're over-activating our own immune system, we begin to develop autoimmune processes, which are diseases in which our body and our immune system in our body is attacking our own body, attacking our own cells. So if we shift out of this analogy to the human body out into the collective body, what we see is suddenly we have human beings attacking human beings. It's like we have this collective autoimmune response that's growing. It's growing worldwide. It's not like the, the small, uh, the, the massive, monstrous, horrible wars of the past. It's, it's more an inflammatory process within the collective psychology, the collective soul. And it's painful to see because once marginalized, once radicalized, there's the immune system in the form of the police and the military come in to, to, to kill and destroy these radicalized elements. But, but the, actual, the actual cure is that we need a population of people who more and more and more are operating like antioxidants. We, we need generous hearts that realize that the people that are most prone to being radicalized they are people who have been, as I said earlier, marginalized, disenfranchised. They don't feel that they, they don't feel like they belong to the system. They don't feel like they have any hope. They don't they don't feel that they can ground themselves and find identity by being part of of the the collective, the the, the so called healthy collective consciousness, the healthy collective psychology. And we're, it it means that we need, as a body, to to let nature teach us. I mean, healthy human beings eat a great deal of natural foods because they're full of antioxidants. And healthy people, healthy souls, need this richness of connection to the deeper self, the, the intrinsic essential consciousness that where you're not borrowing your identity from money and what you have or don't have, or borrowing your identity from your tribe or your community or your religion or your political affiliation. You're know, not borrowing your identity from, from what you look like or how clever or smart you are. That Your actual sense of self is arising spontaneously from a deep connection to source, and you overflow. And as a result, when you interact with other people, nothing is taken away from you. A person that's borrowing identity, for example, from wealth, if they lose their money, they lose a sense of self. If they're borrowing it from smarts and they meet people who are much smarter, they can feel very insecure. They lose their sense of self in, in the face of someone who seems to be brighter than them. If someone is more attractive, suddenly, if you're borrowing your identity from your sense of attractiveness, boom, you lose that because someone's more attractive. But if you're really connected to yourself, if your self-image and your self-worth is not derived from externals, but from some deep inner connection, you become an overflower. You become someone who can donate, contribute, generously give to others so that when they're with you, they have a natural sense of well-being. They, for, for reasons they can't even understand, they feel as if, oh, they're brought to a quality of stillness or peacefulness, self-acceptance. We're acting from that source inside of ourselves and very much the way an antioxidant molecule in the body is acting. It's donating to these bad molecules in such a way as to make them neutral and not punish them, just and without losing anything from within themselves. So here we are coming into the Christmas holidays, and it seems to me really, really important for us to understand that the very ground of our culture and society, we need to be more generous. We need to be more concerned with the well-being of the young. We need to give an education that's grounded not just in buying the conventional notion of success through education, or, but really a sense of being part of the earth, part of each other, part of a community of life. 
so that there is a real sense of fundamental identity. Identity that can't be taken away from you, that you can celebrate with others. And if we can live that way, uh, obviously this would be, is, is a long-term path, but if we can live that way, then the danger of the radicalization of, of individuals or the danger of the formation of gangs to create a sense of collective identity um, or even nations that are in conflict with other nations, which are, which are just larger forms of the same borrowing identity and not having a sense of deep inner source, all of that can become quieter. So our work as individuals, to be generous, to be able to donate from our hearts to those around us in word, with our eyes, with a touch, and sometimes with our money when we donate and we contribute to causes that we really want to help with, all of that helps create less of an autoimmune reaction within society and to decrease this tendency for radicalization. What we know about the body and what we know about how we can make it healthy through natural living and through eating natural sources of food, uh, that same message belongs to us collectively as a species, as cultures and as a society. I see the analogy. I wonder whether you can feel it and sense it in yourselves as well. Blessings to you all.